Yes, well, back with you. Hello again, Jim Burns. What we got going on here today is the power truck on our uh, 628 diesel switcher, 44 ton Northern Pacific. Uh, a viewer in a previous video had mentioned that he had had the same type of trouble with this self-centering coupler assembly and uh, although he was able to get his working again a little bit of cleanup a little bit of white lithium grease and he was on his way uh, i guess it still catches once in a while but he's happy for now uh, but i thought this might make a good opportunity to make a standalone video on how to take these things apart what they're made up of okay so we'll start here with the, the underside of our truck, as you can see. And the first thing you'll notice is this pin here, and that is a plastic pin, so you don't want to manhandle those too much. And there's, if they break, you're out of luck. All right, then there's an E-clip. It's got three catches on it. Below the E-clip, uh, resides a steel washer which sits on top of a spring and then under the spring is another steel washer and uh, then the activation arm and pin for the coupler knuckle all right and here's the button so your uncoupling track pull that button down uncouple your car or your locomotive in this case. All right. Then if we flip her over, you'll see the uh, shank of the coupler here comes all the way back. And then there's the T pin right here. And the T rides up and down in these slots. Okay. I'll try to keep my hands out of the picture view here. Now what I do is I glued a piece of balsa wood to this piece of wood just to give our T something to rest on. It'll sit up inside this cavity here and it'll push on our T pin and then that'll keep it from dropping down and especially when we start putting it together you want it, something to support that pin so you can get all these pieces back together okay all right now if you watch here i'll try not to knock the camera over um keep an eye on that spring back there and you'll see it compresses when the coupler goes off to one side or the other and you see it moving up and down there and then that's what pulls on that t-pin and recenters the coupler all right so what i do to take these things apart Hopefully I won't get in the camera's way. Uh, I use these nippers. They make a good tool for this kind of thing. I don't want to squeeze it or grab anything. I'm just using it as a wedge. All right. Let me get this. Got a magnet stuck to it. Ah, there we go. Get that out of the way. All right. Let me get it jammed up into my fingers here. <laughs> now you see this empty area of the E-clip here. So what I do, if I keep my hands from shaking, 
push that down onto that steel washer. Get our jaws slipped right in there, okay? So the jaws of the snipper are now wedged between the E-clip and the steel washer on top of the spring. Okay. Then the next thing, let me try to switch hands here. You see, I'm not, I'm not squeezing the nippers or anything. I don't want to mar the plastic. I'm just using it as a wedge. So I'm going to push down on that. And then we get our little jeweler's screwdriver here a flathead and if we pry easily she'll work herself out of that groove in the plastic pin okay so we can set that aside put our thumb on that pin remove our nippers and then just let everything fall apart no <laughs> we'll try to do this without letting everything fall apart okay the first washer did fall down there but that's okay we'll get her there she is all right and that that one was sitting on top of the spring okay set that aside then we can coax our spring off the shaft there you go and that spring isn't real powerful but it is it'll shoot stuff off the into the ether if you're not careful okay sorry about that i knocked the camera over of course i knew i wouldn't be able to do this without doing that at least once maybe 10 times uh, <laughs> so what we're left with is our there's a steel washer down here sitting on top of our activation arm you can see that uh, so if we push our pin down lift the truck up and push the pin down and uh, there's our second washer We'll set that aside in a safe place. All right, then we can grab our activation arm here, pull that out. All right, give us a chance to clean that up a little bit. Looks a little dirty, dusty in there. Not too bad though. Mineral Spirits did a good number on that. Okay, and then there's our pin. It's flopping around in there. And if we look on the other side, there she is sticking out. Okay. So we can pull that out all the way. And then uh, you can see here's the groove at the very end where that E-clip slides into. Here's the T. And then this is the shank. All right. Let me set that aside for the moment. We'll get back to that. Uh, and then just pull the coupler out from the front. All right. And then if you look on the other side where the T rests in the coupler, you can see the bevel area on the uh, shank there. Okay. And what you want to do is just, you know, feel in there with your thumb or finger, whatever you prefer. You use what you want. Uh, make sure it's smooth, no rough spots. All right. That feels real nice and smooth on that. So we don't have to do anything to that. So we'll set that aside for the moment. Now our T-pin... Sometimes, if a locomotive is used quite a bit, these will start to develop a wear pattern. Let me move this out of the way so it has a nice 
bright background. Okay. So these will develop a wear pattern on this underside of the T, and it'll start to stick and not ride smoothly in that groove on the coupler shank. But if it's not too bad, I mean, these are plastic, there's not too much modification you can do to these. But uh, if it's not too bad, just uh, use some memory paper, you know, go around it, smooth off any rough spots. This one isn't bad at all because it's a Christmas only locomotive, so it's not getting a lot of use. <laughs> So you can see it's in pretty darn good shape. It was dry, like I said, that's why it wasn't working, but there's no physical damage to it. Okay, so we can set that aside <clears throat> and uh, take a look at our truck here now. You can see there's no cracks Everything looks good in there. There's the little dish that the uh, everything sits in. All right. So that's uh, how you get them apart. Okay, now I think what I'll do is uh, get this out of the way once again should have planned this better huh? <laughs> and uh, we'll have to take a look at our coupler here we got to fix the knuckle we got to replace the pin and the spring uh, the spring was broken so we'll get a uh, our spring out and uh, I guess we'll jump on this next and get that repaired and then we'll put everything back together and show you how that goes all right hang on all right so let's get busy on our coupler here uh, this is the top side here keep it in the camera burns <laughs> zoom out a little bit more there we go. Very good. So once again, we'll get our friend the vice grips out here. And uh, just gently grasp it. And the reason I do this, you've seen in, uh, if you watched an older video, Keep everything from falling out as you're working on it because if you're trying to put your spring and pin in this way you know the pin wants to keep falling down and the spring wants to keep popping off so if you do it vert vertically thusly everything should stay where you want it to stay all right so the very first thing we got to do here is uh, grab our hand, get that ready. There's that. <clears throat> Let's grab our bag of springs here. We'll coax one out the little opening I have. There's one. Got a bunch of those. All right, and we need our new pin, and that sits over here. There's the new pin. Could you see it was in focus? There you go. All right. So now if we take that pin Let's get it through the top of the coupler, the first hole here. Let it stick out just a little bit. Uh, let me locate my tweezers here. Here they are. 
Okay. Get that. What I'm doing here is grabbing the 90 degree bend here. All right. Put the long end <coughs> into the shank and guide it onto our pin. Thusly, push the pin all the way to the end of the springs there. Okay. And then once again, we'll get our friend, our sticky grease. Just put a little drop on there. That's the kind of give us a fighting chance here that everything's staying in place. All right. Uh, see if I can stay out of your way here. Okay, I'm still trying to figure out a good position for the camera <laughs> so you can actually see what I'm doing here, but uh, hopefully I won't be in the way too much, but uh, we'll try to get our hand slipped in here. See if we can accomplish that. Alright, all right, we got our pin engaged, alright, and then uh, we'll just give her a little coaxing here, pull the pin out a little bit, give it a little bit of wiggle room, alright, there we go, push that in there. Get our pin all the way through, out the other end. Very good. Everything's looking good there. Excellent. It's working nicely. And then if we uh, put our activating arm and pin into the coupler here, Just to check the operation, if it locks. All right, there it locks. We'll pull it out, it pops open. Engages and locks the coupler. And it opens. Excellent, that's what we wanted to see there. So I'll go ahead and pin, pin that uh, end over and uh, We'll get back to our power truck and reassembly of this uh, coupler, okay? So now we'll get busy putting this all back together. Uh, got our freshly repaired coupler. I put some oil in there and then I, uh, I blackened the uh, rivet there with just a magic marker. You can see that. All right, so we'll flip this up and around. We'll get our T pin back in here. Through the coupler shank into the grooves. Set that back onto our piece of balsa wood we glued to the wood earlier. All right, that'll hold the pin in place. Uh, we got enough light on everything? I don't know. Okay. All right. So then we need to slip our activation arm from the underside here drop her onto the pin or and then this we'll drop that into there close our coupler 
All right, still in good shape here? Yes. All right, now we need our, one of our steel washers. Drop that on our little poster. Put our spring. Now on the spring, if you notice things are not working to your liking, you can also stretch these springs just a tiny bit if you want to. And not a lot, but you can stretch them a little bit to give you more pull down power on that uh, T to help center your pin or your coupler. All right. But like I said, don't over stress it. Now on this, uh, we'll use our little nippers again. And I use that, that fun tack from Loctite. Uh, I just put a little, little bit on the jaws there and uh, that'll hold our washer nicely in place. Okay. And then, if all goes well, we should be able to, I've got the E-clip in the uh, vice grips there, all right. But first thing we gotta do, jam this in between my crooked fingers. Set that down on top of the spring, press down, slide our, oh, kind of moved around on us, slide our E-clip, release it, push it the rest of the way, there it is, it snapped, pull our nippers out of the way and there she is okay even though I wiped off all the glue and or I mean the glue the oil <laughs> it's still self-centering because I cleaned everything and made sure but we gotta make sure we do lubricate everything so we'll take our light oil here and uh, we'll get some down here under the bevels of the shank, both sides of that. We'll put a drop down so it makes its way down the, our post there. All right, then we're just going to put a little bit around our washer here. All right. And we'll work it back and forth a couple times. Coupler's locking. It's self-centering. So we're in great shape here. This is a win. Let me uh, pull down our post again. Opened right up. Locks, opens. So what I'm going to do is just oil our knuckle here, just a tiny drop of oil there. That'll work its way and then we'll put some here on the inner part of the coupler. It'll all make its way through the assembly there. Very nice. Okay, so there's a successful mission. I hope that helped. Uh, if you didn't know about that, now you do. And if you did know about that, thanks for watching. <laughs> Toodles.